right. I'm here with Bev K, thought leader, best-selling author, industry legend. Uh, she'll also be speaking at the upcoming I4CP 2022 Next Practices Now conference this March. Uh, Bev, there's a word on the mind of many business leaders, and I think this word sends shivers down their spines right now, um, at least for some of them, which is the word retention. Uh, what's, what's your advice to managers who are concerned about losing their best people these days? You know, I would say managers, it's about time you got concerned and you should be concerned and you should have been concerned all these years. <laughs> it's, you know, it's interesting that the headline is the great resignation. And it's like, uh, thank you up there because every single one of my books, I think, is about retention in some way. And the way to get around that great resignation is for every manager to, I hate to use the word, but love, show it to your people. And um, I think they are more concerned now than ever. I have never gotten so many invitations to talk about this. And, but, but to do it in a, in a, teeny period of time. So while they're saying, help our managers, they're saying, can you do everything in an hour or half an hour? And that should do it. And it, it doesn't quite do it. You know, I, I call it a flyover. <laughs> and, um, but at least it's on everybody's radar screen. Yeah. Has your perspective on retention changed in the last year or the last two years? You know, what's interesting is no, it hasn't. You know, the biggest seller of my books has always been Love Them or Lose Them that just came out in its uh, sixth edition. And it's interesting, the, the big change in the book and that was a wake up call for me was my publisher said, show me how everything you said about retention is connected to inclusion and belonging. And I thought, gee, I never thought about that. I'm not a diversity consultant. And as I looked through those glasses um, and wondered what is it that makes people feel they belong, it's all around you know, what a manager does to help that pe person feel included. And it's also around the individual and the individual can't say you're in charge of my engagement and my inclusion. The individual has to ask for what they want also. And I'm not sure we're doing enough of saying to the individual, speak up. They are speaking up more than ever, but I'm not sure still their requests are being heard. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree, agree with that. Um, so maybe uh, piggybacking on that, one of your recommendations on attracting and retaining employees has been to hire for fit, but how, how do managers and companies need to think differently in light of well-being, resilience, and other pandemic era, era factors? Um, I think hire for fit. A manager has to think about fit now and fit for the future. Because what I know is that every new recruit is thinking of five things um, that will, will really tell that recruit how long they'll stay. And it is about fit. And one is Will you, number one, will you use all my skills? Not just the ones that fit this particular next job, but I mean the wealth of experience I bring. That's number one. Number two, they're saying, will you give me ongoing feedback? Not just once a year, but I want to know all the time how I'm doing, how to improve, how, how to make me, help me fit better. Number three, they're saying, to ensure my fit, will you feed me information 
about how the organization is changing, growing, not growing. I don't want to read about it in the newspaper. And that has everything to do with fit. Fourthly, it's, will you show me that there are multiple places for me to fit in your organization, not just one or two? And then lastly, uh, to keep me quote unquote fit, will you ensure my ongoing learning? Will you ensure that I will be able to move anywhere after you? and anywhere within this organization. So, you know, it's interesting. I never thought about fit in those five ways. Now you gave me an idea for another article. <laughs> oh, per perfect. And we will be happy to promote that article uh, when it comes out. Uh, and I would imagine you'd say this, this might be a way to, uh, to get to understand employees in terms of where they fit or where they, they see them going next within the organization. But you've been an advocate of stay interviews, which is something our research still considers a next practice. It's correlated with market performance, but few companies really use them and, and even fewer probably do them well. How do you, how do you do stay interviews well? You know, um, the idea of the stay interview uh, and my biggest um, um, sadness is that I never trademarked those words because Sharon and I in Love Them, um, the very first chapter is ask. And what we learned is that managers ask, what can I do to keep you at the exit interview? And then it is much too late usually. The question, what can I do to keep you, has to be asked you know, over and over and over in a variety of ways. And the answer has to be double clicked on, if you will, and, and, and has to be drilled down deeper because employees know in their heart of hearts why they stay. And when that reason is being eroded, and um, so we need to ask it often and we need to take in what they're saying. And what I found is in stay interviews, the reason managers don't ask is they're afraid the answer will be something like that other job or more money. And what they say to me is um, if they're gonna say um, that other job or more money and I can't deliver, why would I open that in the first place? So no, thank you, I don't wanna ask that question. And we say, if you ask it and the answer is um, that you can't deliver, tell the truth, I can't deliver, what else? And I've said in all of my talks, if you ask what else four times and you don't get something you can do something about, send me hate email. <laughs> and I've never gotten hate email and I've spoken to a lot of people. So um, I think it's critical. It's so basic. And I think now managers are asking, are using stay interviews more than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. And a final question for you, just in this short uh, interview, how do you reinvigorate an employee who has lost their motivation? You know, I, I hate that I'm using this word so much, but you show them you love them. <laughs> and, and don't use that word if that's not comfortable. You know, I think we have to show people that we get them, that they are not like everybody else. And we want to get to know them better. So if somebody has lost their motivation, I might ask a question like, I love this question. When was the last time you said, I love this work? That you said it or thought it or felt it. What were you doing? Who were you with? What were you thinking? What was the issue you were working on? And you know, sometimes when I'm live in front of an audience and I ask it of a huge audience, I can look at their eyes. And I know, 
who has to go really far back and who felt it yesterday. So it is the question, tell me what you love about the work and tell me what you don't love. You know, the other day I stepped into my own little office and asked the two people there um, what they grumble about. You know, what do I ask you to do that makes you say, oh, and, um, and not that I could fix it, but maybe we can play with it. So questions like that are motivating and are reinvigorating and they're not rocket science. And I'm married to a rocket scientist. He always says, care you say it's not brain surgery. So, <laughs> But it is the simple questions and it is the power of asking the second question. So when they answer, don't move to question number two, drill down deeper on what they just said. I, I, I really like that. I, I think that's um, apt advice for, uh, for managers, coworkers, also, as well as my uh, friend who really uh, struggles on the dating scene too, always right. always ask some follow up questions. And husbands and wives, yeah, and and, and those too. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, Bev. I'm looking forward to having you at the the conference in March, um, where you'll be joined on stage with uh, by Lori Likens, our VP of Research, and I look forward to uh, having the two of you uh, dive into this. Uh, you know, re really critical topic of, of um, attraction and retention uh, in more detail. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.